Hi, Dr. Corey. Thank you for participating in this interview to inspire and inform the next generation of Douglas physicians. Great, thank to begin you, with, Mary. thank you. To begin with our first question, why did you choose family medicine? And if you could go back, would you change? Hey, this is a great question, Natalie. Thank you. Um, I chose family medicine uh, because I saw myself, I think I always saw myself as a primary care physician. Um, I always knew I wanted to be a doctor, even when I was a little kid. And I think my own physician inspired me to do so. So I saw myself um, like him, uh, a doctor you could go to who could answer any question, a doctor that my family could call with any question and I'd be able to help them. Um, as I entered med school, I kept an open mind about what I wanted to pursue as far as primary care. I did like a little bit of everything. I enjoyed every rotation, um, but I really liked the concept of family medicine, the concept of being able to follow patients through their lifespan from the newborn to the centennial. I saw my 102 year old patient this week. I was able to do a home visit for her. And just to have the privilege to see people and help them throughout their lives, um, it's a really unique position. And it really spoke to me in medical school when I was able to do that rotation. Uh, would I go back and uh, do this again? Um, I would absolutely choose family medicine again. It's definitely for me. I'm glad I figured that out um, and chose the right career path. Um, being able to treat patients within the context of their family and their communities, I think really allows you to treat them in a holistic fashion and provide them with the best care possible. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that. The second question is, how do you manage your work-life balance? A very interesting concept, <laughs> work-life balance. <laughs> um, this was not around when I went to medical school, um, but I understand that uh, it's become more prevalent and a lot of students ask me about work-life balance. Uh, Work-life balance is, I think it's a little misleading because it suggests that there's some perfect balance to attain. And I think it's very individual. Um, it needs to be what your goals are and what your priorities are. And that's different for, for everyone. Um, it also needs, I think, work and life also need to be fluid. It may not be the same. So work-life balance suggests that there's some static condition that you need to achieve or get to. And it's not, it's not quite like that. But to answer this a little bit more, I think to get at what you're asking, um, once you figure out what's most important to you um, as far as work, and really work is a, is a part of life. So thinking about it really, how is work a part of life? And then what are the other aspects of life that are important to you? whether that's um, family, whether that's spiritual, there's so many different other aspects of life. So what are the most important things for you? Um, the way that I have um, looked at this for myself is, you know, I really, I worked full time for the beginning of my career. And for about the last five years, I've cut back a little bit on my time. So now I'm working three quarters time. And that gives me a little more wiggle room to do and focus on those things that are important for me. Um, I see a lot of my colleagues do that. So being, being flexible with their schedule, I think allows room for other things in life that are important to them. Uh, and this is something that I think is hard to think about when you first become a physician because You've been working so hard to get to this point and you want to work, work, work. <laughs> but um, thinking about those other aspects and how much time you have and just making sure that you have time to a lot to those things that are important to you. Um, another thing that really helps me is focusing on what I'm doing at hand. 
Um, and even though we tend to tend to multitask, tend to be great multitaskers, um, when I'm at work, I really try to focus on work. Um, that way I have um, like undivided attention on what I'm doing. And I feel like I can accomplish a lot more. And then when I'm home, I try to focus on home. So I really try to leave work at work. Um, and that allows me to feel a little bit more fulfilled, a little bit more balanced in what I'm doing. Wow, that's such an amazing perspective because even myself as a pre-medical student, I find myself always asking, what is the work-life balance? Can I manage both? And you made it so clear how individualized that question really is. So I'm really glad you shared that because I, cause I feel like other medical students or even pre-medical students, they'll also see like one answer is not the end all be all because their yeah. priorities are going to be different from what your priorities will be. Yeah. That's so good. I'll, I'll add Natalie that I think, so I'm talking about work-life balance, like once you're a physician and like working mm -hmm. in the real world, I think I, I get this question a lot from residents and students too. I think work-life balance for students and residents is even harder because <laughs> you, mm -hmm you're working towards a goal and, and that goal's taken up a lot of your time. So work-life balance as a student and as a resident is going to look very different than what it looks like later on in life. And that makes sense. Okay, so how long did it take for you to pay off your loans and or are you still paying them off? And to follow up, would you say that your salary currently makes the journey worth it? Yeah, interesting. Um, I am still paying off my loans. <laughs> I am on a 30 year plan, which I think is a pretty common um, payoff plan after residency. Um, so the question, do I think the salary makes the journey worth it? Um, the short answer is no, because I don't think that your drive through medical school and becoming a physician should be your salary. I don't think that you'll really achieve the satisfaction and fulfillment um, based on based on your salary. Um, so if there's there's a lot of other easier ways and easier paths to make a great salary as opposed to going through through medicine. Now the the other side of that um, answer though is I, I also wanna make sure that you understand that it's, it, it does not feel like a burden to pay off my student loans. So if becoming a doctor is your dream and your goal, then I, I encourage you to do it and to not be afraid of the student loans. It can definitely feel very scary when you're signing on for something so huge as a student. Um, but again, once, if you can project down the road, um, even as a family physician, I live a very comfortable life um, and have no financial struggles and can pay my student loans off easily. So I, I hope that answers your question. Absolutely, absolutely. How was your journey through medical school? The journey through medical school was uh, definitely challenging. Um, it's definitely a hard journey. Uh, but at the same time, you're finally studying things that really interest you. You're finally able to interact with patients, which is what I think most students want. Um, so it becomes really um, fulfilling and exciting. Um, you know, through college, there are a lot of things that you have to go through that aren't necessarily of interest and in medical school, it really changes. Everything you're learning is things you want to learn about and um, are appealing to you. Uh, it's certainly challenging. One of the greatest challenges I found was the um, changing how I study. You know, I did have to kind of change because there's so much information in in medical school to learn that some of my study habits from college just did not work for me. And I had to change, change that up. But once you, once I understood that, then I was able to grasp um, the material better. 
After receiving your bachelor's degree, did you take a gap year? Why or why not? And do you have any pros and cons for such? I did not take a gap year, um, but I did poll my colleagues. And I was surprised that about half of them did take a gap year. Um, in asking them this question, I found three answers that came up um, as to why they took a gap year. Um, one was they just needed a break. <laughs> I think they studied hard in college and wanted to have that time as a break. Um, two was they weren't sure if they wanted to do medicine. So they took that time to really explore um, and better understand if medicine was what they wanted to pursue. And the last um, reason that I found was to strengthen their med school application. So they may they they may have taken taken some extra classes after graduating just to boost up their GPA or take time to study for the MCATs again and retake their MCATs. So I, I mean I saw them all as pros um, and great reasons to to take a gap year. These these were my colleagues, so they all did end up going to to medical school. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know of any con per se. For myself, I didn't take a, a gap year. I knew I wanted to go to medical school. I was ready to go. So I felt fine just going straight through. As a pre-medical student, did you face any challenges pursuing this route of medicine? Yes, I think the, the path is never a straight one. Um, there's always challenges. And as a pre-med student, I can think of, of many. Um, I remember going through organic chemistry and, you know, up until organic chemistry, things were going pretty well. <laughs> um, organic chemistry is a very difficult class. And I remember the first semester of it, I did not end up getting the grade that I wanted. Um, so that, you know, second semester, I sought extra help. I, you know, went and spent time, you know, directly with the teacher and the TAs. Um, I uh, changed up my studying pattern, asked my friends for help, friends who have gone through organic chemistry. So, you know, doing that and being proactive, I was really able to get through that second semester of organic chemistry um, and end up with a grade that I was happy with. Um, other challenges, you know, I think, um, a, people, a lot of people ask you, you know, are you sure you want to do medicine? <laughs> I remember being asked several times um, by professors and even, even my advisor, um, are you really sure you want to do this? Maybe you want to do something else. Um, I think this came from, from a good place, um, but it, was, it wasn't as, um, they weren't as supportive, I think, as they could have been, you know, it was a lot more questioning as um, in, instead of support. What is a common mistake you see pre-medical students make? One thing that I see pre-med students, um, a mistake that I see them make is uh, waiting till they're in really bad shape to ask for help. Mm -hmm. I think you need to ask for help early on. Uh, don't wait until you're at the final exam uh, to ask for help. There's so many people at your school, professors, advisors, friends, colleagues that could help you. So asking early on, if you're having just a little bit of trouble, you don't have to be having a lot of trouble. Um, because once you're at the end, it's a little hard to, you know, you can't really backtrack. So asking for help early on and using those resources that are available to you. I'm so glad you said that because I feel like sometimes we think asking for help is a sign of weakness, but it's really not. It's a sign of strength and it gives you it gives you more time to get through whatever setback or whatever you're struggling with to kind of get to the place where you actually want to be. But you won't get there if you don't ask early on. So I'm happy you shared that. For lastly, to close up this interview, what is one piece of advice you can give to pre-medical students? One piece of advice is that 
it takes uh, as much determination and drive to become a doctor as it does smarts and, and intelligence. So if this is your calling, if this is your passion, if you know down deep inside that you want to become a physician, then use that drive and determination to get you there. Um, that hard work will get you far. Well, Dr. Corey, thank you so much for this interview. I know I'm tremendously encouraged and anyone else who watches this video will be just as encouraged, if not more. So thank you so much for being part of this initiative and inspiring um, pre-medical students at Douglas to just continue to just strive for their dreams and go get it basically. Thank you so much, Natalie. It's my pleasure.